Hey crew gears, Robo here and welcome back to the long awaited second part of the Tentacle Outpost Diorama video. Sorry, I just always forget to take more time than for a custom amiibo or weapon prop. But we did it and now we will show you guys the end result. So let's get started. First was the base of the map. This we traced from our custom made map onto a new plate of foam board. Then we immediately continued with the walls that are placed around the snow globe and the training area. With wetted edges we made using suppliers. Then these foam walls are placed onto the base with the hot glue placed on the foam board first to minimize the melding of the foam with the heat. Next are the sidewalks made from some EVA foam. And the asphalt chunks that are also glued in place from some craft paper. And the cracked concrete, which is directly made into the foam board by pressing a pencil a bit too hard in the foam to make a deeper imprint when it's painted over. And finally, some more craft paper is used for the little asphalt parts scattered around the map. Then we started on the iconic rocks of the tentacle outpost. For these, we first made a foam board base. On which we use some newspaper and aluminium foil to make this base. On to which we use some stone clay to make the rocks. And for which we almost needed four packages of this stone clay. Phew! But to make sure everything is sturdy enough, we also made a wooden frame to glue under the base. And while this dries, we also need to make the metal bridge that would lead to the rest of the levels. This one is made from some granny grating and some more coffee stirring sticks. Both whole and half. Then once the frame is dried we can glue the base onto it. Never thought that WVD thermals I made would be multifunctional. <laughs> Finally we can start with the sand coating on the base. 
Some quartz sand is glued in all places that aren't already marked as asphalt or concrete. This does create a huge mess, so newspaper underneath is advised to be placed earlier in the process. Then we have some more details with multiple radio towers on the map. We get it, Muna. But the towers aren't complete without some satellite dishes made from the heads of some wooden spoons. But the end still felt a little barren, so why not add some chopped bamboo skewers as finishing touches. with a few places for a few special amiibo. Some already made, some incoming. But these, of course, still need a bottom or they would just fall through. And finally, the rocks are dry. So let's start with the painting process. With a base coat of black for the shadows and a coat of white for the spots that light would hit. But that's not the color of these rocks, so we need to go over them with this clay red we made. And after, we mix this with the grey to make the perfect color to dry brush over the high spots of the rock. And 
and lastly some green for vegetation, but more on that later. Time to get the switch from grayscale to color with a sand brown for the base of the dirt. Get it? Because it now looks like Splatoon is played in grayscale mode without any color. And a coating with a normal brown after for some variation in color. Next we have a white mixed with a tiny bit of brown to paint the walls with. Then we mix this with a black to make more of a grey to make the top of the walls and add this. And this is then mixed with another bit of white to make a light grey for the asphalt. But man, that asphalt color needed a lot of layers, like 5 or so layers of paint. Luckily it does end, and so we can continue with the black ray for the sidewalks. And now that the map is completely covered in paint, we better go to the bridge. Which has already gotten a coating of silver spray paint and is now getting a white base for the graffiti on it. Which afterwards get a color. And remember that silver spray paint? Yeah, we also used that on the radio towers. The wooden board near the training area also gets its brown color. And finally, we can add the green undercoating to the map. So we go from the snow globe to the rest area. 
to the training area. And finish with the tentacle shack. And also between the pieces of the asphalt, looks like the tentacle outpost has a bit of a weed problem. Then, before we can start the final assembly, we have a few more things to make. First up are these warning signs that are placed behind the snow globe. These we designed, printed and now we are gluing them onto some craft paper to make them a bit sturdier. Then we get this large squid beak splatoon icon and cover it in painter's tape to make it sturdier as well. After which we cut it out. Then we can use it as a pattern to paint over to make the logos on the fabric that we're going to use on the rocks to make the rumble mats. And while those are drying, we can also cut out the warning signs. And once also dry, we can glue the nets around the rocks to cover the foam board bases. Finally, with everything surrounding the lower parts of the rock done, we can glue these onto the map. Then we have the long awaited moment of the assembly of the props from the previous video. After the props, we attach the signs and these ribbons around the entrance. And all around the radio towers.
and with us already hanging stuff so nicely around the map, why not continue with these flags? From one radio tower to the rocks, in between the rocks, and to the other radio tower around the training area. Finally, we can add the flocking around the green patches to make the start of the vegetation around the map. Now all that's left are the supports around the rocks. And these little lanterns. And lastly, we have these patches of grass that we can glue onto most of the flocked areas around the map. And with that, we can finally, after almost a month of work, announce the Tentacule Outpost Diorama finished!
Hey Critic Gears, Robert here, and we really hope you enjoyed the end result of the Tentacle Outpost Diorama as much as we do. Now all that's left to make are the new versions of the Snow Globe of DJ Octavio, and to make the long-awaited custom of Agent 4, and its secret character around the upgrade. Maybe we could even use these as the next custom amiibo map, as a hero mode theme. What would you guys think? But first, we have another very special project, our second ever collaboration even. So we hope you guys are very curious about with whom. So, see you guys then. Keep this creative here turning, and we will see you in the next video.